I am the great Jehovah, invisible commander. Hey! The God that kill and you have not committed murder. The God that make it alive. The Lord that knows our secret. You know where we were born. Before we were born, you know us. Almighty God. Today I am speaking to destinies. Every destiny that is buried. Every destiny that is attacked. Every destiny that is in prison. Come out in the name of Jesus. Hear the voice of Jehovah. Hear the voice of Jehovah. Hear the voice of Jehovah. I don't know where they buried your destiny. I don't know where they buried your destiny. I don't know where they buried your destiny. I speak to your destiny. Wherever it is, comfort in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, the man of war. I invoke your power. I invoke your power. Yes, the God, the God, the God, the raised up Jesus from the dead. He was buried and forgotten. But on the third day, he said, lift up your voice, all you gates, and be there lifted up, you everlasting gates. And the King of glory will come in. I speak to you, Jehovah, the man of war, Jehovah, over two, Jehovah, 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 I speak to you, Almighty God. Rise, 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 and let your enemies be scattered. Oh, the beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. The, the one that is and is to come. You have no beginning, you have no end. You are called Jehovah. The man of war. The man of war. The man of war. The hour has come. Glorify your name. Jesus. Holy Ghost manifest your power. Invisible commander. The one that people don't see but you walk wonders. The angel that raised up Jesus from the dead. Rise. The one that visited Israelite by the by Jericho. You say you are the commander of the armies of heaven. Rise tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alpha, Omega, you are worthy of my praise today. Alpha, Omega, you are worthy of my praise today. Thank you, Lord. You give the barren children. You raise the dead. One day a woman who was not in your appointment met with you. 
She said, if I can only touch the hem of your garment, I will be healed. You never prayed for her. You never invited her. That she was just in your presence. Her faith worked. Another man said, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. Just speak the word and your servant Almighty God, you are Jehovah. Jehovah overdue. When a woman asks you for one child, you give her seven. When a man asks you for something, you overdo. Father, today overdo it. I said today overdo it. Today's service, Lord, let the impact be felt in their villages. Everywhere their destiny is buried, I release fire right now. Liberation is coming your way. Because Jesus is Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody give me an amen. I said, somebody give me an amen. I didn't hear that amen. I said, somebody give me an amen. I said, somebody give me an amen. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Glory. The chains are broken. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. please. Can you sit down in the presence of the Almighty God? Thank you very much. Everything that has happened on the earth is written. And I want to talk about what I call the written court. Something that has been written that needs to be interpreted is called a court. A computer code. language. But it's a, code a scientific code. language that is written. It's talk about code. To cheat Until code. you break the code, you will not know the secret. Today we are breaking the code of your destiny. And whatever God has written about you is going to come to pass. I didn't hear an amen. I said whatever God, God, God has written about you shall come to pass. Matthew chapter 21 and I read verse 1. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bedfast. At the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples. Saying to them, Go into the village opposite you. And immediately you will find a donkey tied. And a called with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he, he, will, set, he will send them. Now this is important. And all this was done that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey it carved the fall of a donkey. Zachariah spoke this word some Zachariah. years before this time. Zachariah. Now you have to stay with me for some minutes before you understand. Zachariah chapter 9 verse 9 spoke about this. When Zachariah spoke this, it had not yet happened. It was a prophecy. There was something written about a donkey that the king is coming to ride on at the fullness of time the donkey was found then Jesus said for Ye it is written Jesus said it is written what happened about the donkey was not an accident it was written before when you read Luke chapter 2 verse 25 Luke chapter 2 verse 25 
And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he will not see dead before he had seen the Lord's Christ. There was a revelation, there was a prophecy concerning him. You will not die. You will see Christ. On that day, look at the scriptures. Can we go to the next verse, verse 27? So he came by the Spirit into the temple. Listen to me. He was in his house. He was in his house. On the day of the fulfillment of the prophecy, something moved him. And he walked to the temple. When you are not in the place of the fulfillment of prophecy, you will miss divine touch. The Holy Ghost that spoke to him. The Bible says, so he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the, the, the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, according to the custom of the law. The, go to the next verse. He took him up in his arm. And blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. The last line is very important. According to your word. Your servant is departing in peace. On the day, on the day of the prophecy, he left where he was. He moved in and they met with Jesus' spirit. And he took the baby according to the word of the Lord. He said, now I can die because the word of God has come to pass in my life. Listen to me from today. Everywhere you take your feet, it shall be towards your destiny. I didn't hear that amen. I said, your legs will not take you to where you will die. Can somebody stand up and say, this leg will not take me to death. This leg will not take me to my barrier. This leg will not take me to accident. This leg will take me to the fulfillment of the prophecy concerning my life. Somebody give me an amen. Somebody give me an amen. Sit down. You have not yet understood. Just keep calm. You will get to know why I'm talking about this. I am talking about the written code. Today, God is changing your life, He's changing your destiny, He's changing many things in your life, changing many things in your life. The story of your life is about to change. Acts to the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 16, chapter 2 speaks about, speaks about a Pentecost. So, Peter. Peter, lift up his voice. The Bible said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That's ah, just that. Verse 16, said, this is that that was spoken by the prophet. This is that. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. In the last days I poured my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. That was what was written. But many years the power came so the people were confused so they spoke to Peter and, and Peter said look don't be confused this that you see is that do you understand what I'm trying to say now you get to understand me this one is that this one is that it was spoken before because nothing happened by accident this one is that it took time but it was a fulfillment of prophecy this is that because they didn't understand Joel 2 and then when God brought it 
by revelation he understood that this is that some things have been spoken about Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 before I form you in the womb I knew you before you were born I sanctified you I ordain you a prophet to the nations there are words Every word that God has spoken will never fall on the ground. It shall come to pass. Every prophecy concerning your life, as I stand on this altar, I stand by the mouth of heaven to say everything spoken about you shall come to pass. Before you are born, before your mother conceived you, God said, I know you. Before you are born, I know you'll be here today. Before you are born, I know you'll be sitting here. Jeremiah said, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Verse 12 says, then the Lord said to me, you have seen well. I am ready to perform my word. I am ready. Because when you see it, then the time has come. For somebody, your time is already here. You are about to give birth to the vision God has spoken. I don't know who I'm talking about. You have suffered for long. You have asked yourself, this prophecy, will it ever come to pass? God brought me here to confirm to you that your destiny is about to be fulfilled. Before you are born, I know you. You know what? Sometimes God will allow the devil to play with you. You will think you are so seated as a woman. You may even go beyond something, you, beyond redemption. You, people have messed up with you. You even have children at home out of wedlock. Nobody is taking care of them. You are a nobody. You have become useless. You are a nobody. As a young man, you are a drop out. You can amount to nothing. But listen to me. I am come here to speak the word of God that whatever is spoken about you shall come to pass. I say it shall come to pass. I don't care your situation. I don't care your predicament. I bring you out of that bondage. Fulfill purpose. Fulfill destiny. Somebody give me an amen. I think here I said somebody give me an amen. Before I formed you, I know you. As a matter of fact, God has told us that before he, our parents even got married, before the world was formed, he has known me. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to adopt our sons by Jesus Christ himself according to the good pleasure of his somewhere in the chronicles of heaven that a day is coming you will be sitting and hearing me listen to me God is a great God wherever they are buried to your destiny because your destiny does not start from them. I command your destiny to come up. I command life to come up. I command life to come up. When God has a destiny for you, when you realize your destiny, it's your responsibility to bring your destiny to come to pass. It doesn't happen by accident. Because the devil knows that when you rise, his kingdom falls. He knows that you have the heart to give. So he frustrates your business. You are in debt, covered everywhere. Some of you were crying last night. You are crying, debt is too much. What can I do? God is talking to somebody here. But listen to me, God knows that. That cage is broken. I, you understand? I said that cage is broken. Many of, many of you don't understand who I am. You don't understand. When we speak the word of God, it doesn't matter your circumstance. Even if your circumstance says no, even if your circumstance is contrary to the word, the word of God will fabricate it, will turn it, it will turn it until the word of God comes to pass. Look at the rest field there. He no. came to our cross overnight. He just got, got married. His wife was going to law school for a year. So he said, I'm not going to give birth. That was what he said. So you make sure he doesn't give birth until after a year. 
Because the wife would go to law school. So he did a mistake. He came to our crossover. And I stood on the altar. And I said, I feel where are you? I said, be ready to come with your newborn baby next year. He said, no. No, 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 no. I said, I don't care whether you take drugs or whatever so that you know you but I don't care anything next year you are coming with your baby boy to this place he rejected it he is here the coming year he came with the baby boy I don't care what the enemy has done in your life the word of God will break every chain that have tied you for long in the name of Jesus Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah had a child. Uh, Jer Daniel, actually. Daniel. Daniel. Daniel had read from the volumes of books. He read Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 12. Jeremiah. And he says, he says in Daniel chapter 2 that in the first year of the reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the numbers of years that according to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet must pass before the end of the dissolution of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. Then I turn my face to the Lord and seek him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. He, he, he sought the Lord because he read somewhere that after 70 years that they will be liberated. But 70 years reached and they were still in bondage. The man said this cannot work. This is what the word of God says. Whatever is written about us must come to pass. So he went to pray and fasted. He began to seek the face of God. He began to wait on the Lord. The first day he began to pray, God had him. And angel Gabriel was bringing the message. And the demon stopped a Gabriel. Prince of Persia stopped Gabriel. And Daniel did not stop praying. Daniel, Daniel continued to pray. Daniel, and God, God was like, ah, I have sent Gabriel long ago. Why is this man disturbing me with prayer? You see the prayer, prayer of a man that is righteous is effective, is powerful. When you put your knees on the ground, demons tremble. Heaven begin to listen. Because that is our means of communication. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Another angel had to come. Gabriel had to come to fight. And when eventually Gabriel, I mean, Michael came and Gabriel came with the message. He said, oh, you mighty man, greatly beloved. He said, look, from the day you began to pray, God has answered you. Yes, it, is, it was written. But you must bath it on your knees. Today, you will bat your destiny. If you don't know how to pray, today, you will bat your destiny. I will not bat it for you. You will do it. I hear what I'm saying. They say nobody will have a car in your house. The devil is a liar. They say nobody will go to school in your house. The devil is a liar. They say nobody will keep up to child in your house. The devil is a liar. People have been dying in your house. It is not normal. On your knees. Because it is written about you. Somebody give me an amen. I said give me an amen. There are forces of darkness that even though the power, the grace, the anointing, the child is yours, they will stop it in the atmosphere. They will stop it. It is Today I come to agree with you. Whatever blessing that is kept for you, the demons have all it at the, at, the, at the atmosphere. Today we are bringing it down. I said we are bringing our answers down. I said today we are bringing our answers down. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because it is written.
Yes. We wow. You will say, well, has it been written about me? Yes. Every word of God yes. is yours. When the word of God said you will not die but live, it is yours. When the word of God says by his stripe you are healed, it is yours. When the word of God says since I was born, I have now grown old, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor has children begging bread. It is yours. Every promise of the word of God is yours. The Bible says none of you will be barren. None of you will have miscarriage. That is your word. Your name is written on it. It is yours. It is yours. So you are going to bring it down. You must be angry with the position that the devil has put you. Whatever is written concerning you, tonight you are going to trigger it. It's going to begin to happen. Somebody give me an amen. When you trigger that thing, that is when you meet with men of destiny. Many of you, all the people you relate with, they are people that sap your energy, sap your strength, sap everything. After this meeting, you meet with people but that are called helpers of destiny. As a young girl, every, young girl, every man that comes to you, he comes to sleep with you. They come to mess you up. But when your destiny is unleashed, when your destiny is open, the man that will approach you, he will say, baby, I want to marry you. And you see that he's serious about it. Because that is your destiny. Whatever I stop your destiny, I release fire upon that thing. If it's done by your forefathers, if it's done by a confidence, if it is done by witchcraft, I break that power of witches. Somebody give me an amen. Today is my day. Touch your neighbor, say today is my day. Say today is my day. Touch your neighbor, say today is my day. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said sacrifice and offering you do not desire. For the body you are prepared for me. Yes, he said, but a body have that prepared for me. In bone offering and sacrifice for sin, you had no pleasure. Verse 7. I'm talking about Hebrews 10, 7. Then I said, behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written about me. To do your will. Oh God. Jesus came. Yes, so and he said there was something written. So I come to fulfill what is written. Stand up on your feet. And speak to yourself. Say I come to fulfill. What is written. About me. About me. And I shall fulfill it. Because it is written. In Jesus name. Sit down on your feet. Sit down, sit down on, on, on the head of your enemies. Sit down. Sit down, sit down. Sit down on the head of your enemies. Let fire catch them. I said, let fire catch them. Somebody shout fire. Somebody shout fire. Somebody shout fire. Somebody shout fire. It is written about me. No, it is written. I come to do your will. So that is why everywhere that God sees anything that is the will of God, Jesus will do it. You, now, when, when you go to Luke chapter 4 verse 17 you will hear Jesus the Bible says and he entered the temple he had been around all this while but that day he entered the temple and they handed over a book in and he opened the book tonight is a night of opening the book they don't want you to see it but tonight your book is open. And when he had opened the book, he found the place. Jesus, yes. he found the place where it was written. <laughs> what did I say? He say what? He found what? The place. Today you are finding that place. The place where it is written. He found the place. And what did he say? He said, and the, he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. The broken liberty to the captives. And the covering of sight to the blind. To set a liberty to those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable. Year of the Lord. Now when you read Isaiah chapter 4. One, you discover that there's another, there's another thing in that verse. 
to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then there was something in Isaiah 61 verse 2. Jesus did not mention it. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and Jesus closed the book. He did not read the second line. Because that second line is talking about the end time. That second line is talking about the day of tribulation. That second line is talking about the wrath of God. And Jesus did not come to bring the wrath of God. So he closed the book. He decided not to read the bad words. Because it was what he came to bring favor. And if God has come to bring favor, then it means that it is written concerning you. That favor is yours. You are not answering the way I wanted. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Don't accept any attack from hell. Because he did not read the other one. And then he, he went and the Bible said he closed the book and gave it back and sat down. And the eyes of everyone was gazed on him. And he said to them, this book today is fulfilled in your hearing. Listen to me. I see many things. I see a man going to his village with a car. And they have said you can never ride a car. Not that car is anything. But to prove to the villagers that your God of favor has visited you. One day I was preaching. As I was preaching, there's this elderly woman in our church, one of the elders. So I, I, I was preaching, I passed her, and I turned, I said, Madam, where is your car? She was shocked. I said, where is your car? She said, yes, I know I'm going to buy a car. I said, no, you are supposed to have a car two years ago. Where is the car? She was confused because she has no car. So she told me, she said, that, well, I want to buy a car for transport. I said, no, your own car. You are elderly, but God said that you are supposed to have a car that you ride inside yourself before you die. When I finished saying, I said, what did I say? I said, why did I say it? What did I say? I have already said it. And I have closed the book. Which means the devil cannot put anything in that book. Because the book is closed. One month later. She said, man of God. Somebody called me from Joss. He said, there is this Mercedes Benz. Can you come and take it? She, they drove the car. They brought it to church. Old woman bouncing in her car before she dies. What is written about you is never too late. It's it's going going to come to pass. It is written. Anywhere you hear it is written. It is yours. I say it is yours. It is yours. I am still going. I hope you are understanding what I'm talking about. So Isaiah said that. But you see, when you go to Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, you will hear that even the devil has also written something against us. The devil, as you are born, as God is writing his promises over your life, the devil is writing. But when Jesus comes, the Bible says he plot out the handwriting having wiped out I like old King James if you can give me say plot him out the handwriting of ordinances that was written against me which was contrary to us which was working against the purpose of God he said having plucked it out he took it away from the way so that I can pass he carried it and hang it on the cross listen to me the devil has written things he has written sicknesses that is why you are suffering typhoid that is why you are suffering disease that is why you are suffering death in your family that is why you are suffering poverty for the Bible says he has blot out blot out blot out every handwriting that is written against you contrary to you whatever Satan has written by the blood of 
of Jesus, by the power of the cross, I stand on this exalted altar to speak by the power of God. Let everything written against your life, let it be wiped off. Let it be wiped off in the name of Jesus. Because Isaiah 49, 24 tells us you can stand up on your feet if you want to stand because we are going to pray. He says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful, lawful captives be delivered. That means that what you are suffering, you are the cause of it. He said, what you are suffering, you are the cause of it. And he said, can you be delivered? You are the one that did that problem. It is your parents that do, do that thing. You are the one that has done this. Can you be delivered? Then what did the word of God say? Verse 25. He said, but thus says the Lord. Can you stand up on your feet and look at somebody say, thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. And we are you here, thus says the Lord. God is about to manifest his power. Thus says the Lord. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with that man. Contend with me, and I will save your children. I will contend with that. that. Verse 26. Verse 26. Verse 26. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. Yes, with their own flesh. And they will be drunken with their own blood. As with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I am the Lord. I am thy Savior. I I am thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. Whatever is written against you, today God is canceling it. And that purpose concerning your life shall come to pass. Listen to me, let me tell you a testimony. Let me share with you a testimony. If you are not ready to pray, that is your own. But I will agree with people who want to say anything that God has written about me shall come to pass. I told you that I was giving birth right in the church. But I was giving birth to seek. I would faint more than seven times in a day. And, that, that, and, and, and unfortunately, unfortunately, that, that church, at that time, they don't believe in taking drugs. So there was no way my mother could take me to the hospital. But I will faint, I will faint. Then two men of God came into the house, laid hands upon me, and said, this child will be an instrument in the hands of God. He's going to go to the whole world. I was told, I grew up. You never think, because when I grew up, I was so lean. Then something happened. And God told me to minister. Listen to me, one day, I was playing. There was something we were playing, like uh, these buttons, I don't know if you do them, you just hit them, you put like 10 there, and you just hit them, it enters into a place, and the person that wins will carry all of them. I don't know if some people do that, but the buttons have quality. One is two, one is three, one is four. So it depends on the bigness on the size of the buttons. So I was winning. So I win and after I've won, then I saw an unusual man physically. He came around the place. And he said, hey, how are you? I said, fine. So we started chatting. I can't remember what we said. But as we were walking, I was going to, towards the market where my mother was with my... With my with my buttons that I've worn. As I was walking, then the man said, Can you give me some? I was small, so I said, Why should I give you? Do you know what it takes me to win this thing? How can I give you? So my attention went somewhere. And I turned within this way. I didn't see the man. It was when I grew up and God called me, I discovered it was an angel that came to check on his boy. This boy is growing. Let me see how he is. Let me talk to him. Let me identify him. God is an amazing God. Whatever he said about you shall come to pass. I am fulfilling destiny. 
That is why it's impossible to kill me. That is why I tell my people, if you see that I die, it's my time. No sickness can kill me because I'm fulfilling destiny. If you understand what I am pushing, if you understand the challenges I am going through, but nothing can kill me. But because I'm a child of destiny, something is written about me. And God has clean, wiped out satanic writings. I'm, not, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to agree with you. God, whatever you wrote about me, time has come. Time has come. You are a businessman. Look at you, you are suffering over small, small things. You are, you are, you are sitting on a table. But what God is seeing is a greater thing. It's a greater thing. You are just singing here in Pal Heaven. And God is saying, God is saying that there is something greater. These guys I came with, people get, get, people get, get intimidated to lift other people up. I am a helper of destiny. You don't meet me and remain the same. And God is bringing you away helpers of destiny. You will never remain the same again. Somebody I was taking him out of the country. And he said, Daddy, thank you. He said that nobody in our village has ever traveled. We were on the plane. He will, when they bring food, he will eat. He said, Daddy, thank you. When we stepped on, he said, Daddy, thank you. Everyone will say, Daddy, thank you. What am I doing? I'm just fulfilling the scripture written about him. God will be bringing people after this convention. They will come. You will not beg them to help you. They will come to help you. Listen. Listen to me. I did not come to Uganda because I know Pastor Wilberforce. I'll give you this and we'll pray. I didn't come here because I know him. I came here, I met somebody, I went to do a conference for Stephen Sibiala. Calvary Temple, Calvary I mean, Temple. Uh, Uganda. Kampala. Now they call it Christ Church, Uganda. When we finish, then the Lord put my spirit. There's a friend of mine who has a friend. So he asked me to greet the friend. So I called the friend and said, I'm going to visit him. Then God told me. He said, I'm going to give you a small door. Don't despise it. He said, that small door has a mansion inside. So, but I didn't know what it meant. So I came. I called him and he said he's in Mbale. So Pastor uh, Sibiala talked about him that he's his good friend, but he has a church also of, uh, of his son. So we came. When we dropped, I was expecting to see a car. Then I saw some guys. They just walked to us. Are you the visitors from Nigeria? I said, yes, so they start dragging our bags. They start dragging our bags. And they took it to Boda Boda, you call it? Sincerely, I've not, I've not been on a motorcycle for many years. Ambassador Davo is not here. You would have known how he looks like. Two of us sat down on one. And because he was elderly, so he sat inside. So me, I sat outside. My was the ayon. Where were they taking us to? They say one place is called Moyo. Moyo. We entered Nawio. I look at the church of the guy. Ambassador looked at me and said, Apostle, do you know them before? I said, I don't know them. He says, it's either God that brought us here or we are in trouble. We entered. They first of all asked us where we are going to eat. That they thought we are Indians. 
We are afraid to, to, to bring beef. So what are we going to eat? So we stayed there. Can you imagine you are a visitor? The people are asking us where are we going to sleep? We are visitors. Where are we going to sleep? I said you have a hotel here. They say there is one. Now the hotel. The bed. And the bag. And a human being. No mountain. All in one place. So we slept. But mosquitoes. Put me anywhere. But I don't want mosquitoes. I slept. Early in the morning we woke up. When we woke up. We finished what we were doing. I, I was so devastated. I could, I, could I could not preach. It was ambassador that preached. Me, I was snapping pictures. So we left. We came to Imbali. The next day. We called Mataya. He was in the, on the mountains preaching to some people on the rocks. But in the night he came. Sibial called him and told him some Nigerians are coming. He said, I don't want Nigerians. They talk about money. Yes, we talk about money. Don't you talk about money. You, <laughs> you like money, but you don't talk about it. In Nigeria, if they give you money, you first of all refuse. In Nigeria, we sent to My brother, Muganda. when they give you money, Mubakuwe when a visitor give you money, you first of all say no. Yes, you say no, please. Neda. Just keep it. Neda, neda, then the man will beg you and say, please take. Then, then you will take. But here, before you even give, you say no. 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 Before you even give, you say no. 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 <laughs> so I went to his church the next day because the story is short I was in his church and I learned that he was trying to go to America for 30 he said 38 times looking for visa he couldn't get so I finished the first message ambassador preached in the second service as ambassador finished preaching then I heard the voice of God say go and take that mic tell him that he should dust his clothes package his back what I'm saying to you is on video. What I'm telling to you is just here in Calvary Temple. Some of them are here. Calvary Temple. Pack your back. Take Mataya. You are living for America. I just said it and I left. The next day I left. Another day it was uh, the independence or something. So, so he, one week later he called me. He started singing. He started singing on the phone. He said, Pastor. 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 What's happened? I said, What? They just called me now. I should go to the embassy to take my visa. He said, 39 times. You know, the stripe is 39. 39 times I've been to the embassy. Why did God brought me? So that he can go to America. Listen to me. The devil can delay it. But he cannot stop it. I said, he has delayed it. The mistake he has made is to allow me to step into this place. Because every power that has hold you bound is broken in the name of Jesus. So, it was in that same trip that your pastor saw me and said please can we go and take coffee so we went and he, he said shy what is shy tea, tea. that is it, that is a rasmus language ah. when you say shy that is tea in oh. their language okay are you, are you maybe you're from the same place <laughs> <laughs> wow so he took me there and we had some chat and that was how the story went in. But how did I come here? Through Nawuyo. 
After this service, somebody will walk to you. They don't look like it. Don't despise him. Because he may know the person who knows the person who knows the person who knows the person that is your helper of destiny. Because God is about to locate you. Whatever is written about me shall come to pass. This man of God, this is not his place. But something was written before he was born. If you ask him how he came to this place, I wasn't there, but I will tell you. He was dragged. He reluctantly came in. He, he never knew what will happen to him. He came, there was nothing here. But God has written something. Some of you are thinking it's already the end. It's never the end because there are greater things God has written. God has written things about you. The devil has broke your womb. That you will not give birth. But you already have children. It's written. Thus says the Lord. It shall come to pass. There's a connection waiting for you. 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 God is locating you. God is locating you. God is locating you. Whatever is written against me, I bring it to the cross. I bring it to the cross. Can you begin to go before the Lord? Whatever is written against me, I block it out by the power of the cross. If you want to pray, you can come to the altar and pray. I will agree with you. You can come to the altar and pray. There's a challenge over your life. Yes, but it's going to be broken. Come and pray. Come and talk to God. Don't play any keeping. Don't play any keyboard. I want you to pray. Don't play anything. Don't play anything. Just begin to talk. Whatever the enemy has written, there is a satanic script that is happening with your life. Sickness, disease, barrenness, trouble in your home. You have dropped out of school. That is not the will of God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. From the Father of lights. This God says you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Whatever is written about me, that is the prayer you are praying. That is written against me. I block it out. I hang it on the cross. I hang it on the cross. Whatever they have written about me, whatever wicked people have written about me, in the name of Jesus, I block it out. You are not praying. You are just advising. You are not praying. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Everybody stand up on your feet. Hold the hand of somebody. And pray with him. Two people just hold two hands. Turn and hold somebody. Say pray for me. Tell the person pray for me. Every handwriting written against me. Let it be blocked out. Every satanic writing. That is working in my life. Every sickness. Let it live now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, remove that hand. Remove that hand. You are going to pray. You clap your hand. You are going to pray. What are you going to say? Whatever is written about me, it will come to pass. You pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever is written about me, whatever is written about me, about my marriage, about my children, A 
about your job. Let it come to pass. Help us of destiny. Locate me, O oh God. Sheli bakaria la bakose. Labakasa koboli bakaria. Makasa koboli bakaria la bakose. Whatever it's written about me come to pass according to the word of the Lord. Let the book of heaven be open concerning me. Let it begin to come to pass. What is written about me? The agenda of heaven concerning my life that is written about me before I was born. Before the foundation of the earth, let it come to pass. I see chains breaking. I see chains breaking. The word of God is coming to pass in your life. Choir, come and sing that song. Chains are broken. Chains are breaking. Chains are being broken. Chains are being broken. There is power in the name of Jesus. The door is opening. I see somebody's door is opening. There is a person here. You have been going to the embassy. Your door is about to be open. Your season has come. There is power in the name of Jesus. The chains are broken. The doors have been opened. The purpose of God concerning your life is coming to pass. Yes, the interpretation. Go ahead, go ahead and pray. Don't worry. They'll be singing. You continue to pray. You continue to pray. You continue to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Break every chain, break every yoke, and let the purpose of God concerning my life come to pass. Come to pass. Come to pass. Time has come. 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 You are tired of praying? You are tired of praying? No! Let the door open. Let the door open. The captives of the mighty. Yes, they have been delivered. God said, I will feed them with their own blood. I will feed them with their own flesh. Your deliverance has come. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's power. There's power. Doors are open. Doors are open. Doors are open. Doors are open. Helpers of destiny are coming your way. Thank you, Lord. Your hands, everybody. Thank you, Father. The hour has come for the fulfillment of prophecy. What has been written about you? 
that is written before the foundation of the earth I bring it to come to pass I bring the manifestation let it come to pass I open the book of your breakthrough I open the book of your marriage I open the book of your womb I open the book of your business I open the book of your ministry I open the book of miracles I open the book helpers of destiny shall locate you 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 the door that has been closed I command it to be open now you have been looking for work you have done several interviews be ready helper of destiny is coming helper of destiny is coming helper of destiny is coming there's a lady here you have been crying for marriage the time has come the chains are broken I break the force of darkness that has been confronting your life wherever you are you are hearing the voice right now be free be free be free be free be free in the name of Jesus be free I break the power of hell over your life that has caused you to remain that way I visit your father's house I break the power the force of darkness from your father's house from your uncle's house be free in the name of Jesus There is somebody here. You have what I call limitation. You are living in a cycle. There is a particular amount of money you have never crossed. Every time you set a target to cross. Something will happen. I break that cycle. I don't know who that person is but I break that cycle right now if you are the one raise up your hand wave your hand let me see there's a cycle over your life I command it broken now I command it broken now I command it broken now you are free you are free you are free you are free I raise up businessmen captains of industries help us of destiny from the north to the south from east to west I release angels that come to help raise up help us of destiny give these people a testimony they will meet with a man that will transform their lives. They will meet with a woman that will transform their lives. People that will beg them to help them. I raise them up. Why? Because it is written about them. Let it come to pass. Let it come to pass. Let it come to pass. Crossing borders. Crossing borders. Crossing borders. Crossing borders. Crossing borders. I break the chain. I break the cycle. You shall cross borders. You shall cross borders. You shall cross borders. In the name of Jesus. There's a woman that's crying over her children. They are not the way you want them to be. Where are you? Where are you? Come here. Where is that woman? Your child is a pain in your heart. Your child is a pain. Your child is a pain. Lift up your hands. Take Wherever that those children are right now. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Locate them. 
Jehovah, 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 the man of war. They have turned the hearts of your children away from home. But wherever they are, I call them. Return home. Wherever you are, meet with Jesus there. Return back a better person. Because you gave birth to this baby. Because you gave birth to this child. Because you gave birth to this child. Thank you, Father. You hear your voice. You hear your voice. You return home. You meet with a man that will help him. He will meet with a man that will help him. Come, let me pray for you. The Lord will wipe away your tears. You wipe them away. In this life, you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. You are not forgotten. You are not forgotten. God said, I have seen your tears. I have heard your cries. I have come to remember you. Let the chain be broken. All of you that have come here, I want you as you pray. Call the name of this child. Ask him to return home. Can you just pray one minute? You know the name of the children or the child. Maybe it's your brother or your sister you have been looking for. Maybe it's not your son. Well, can you call that name? Call the name. You say, I command you in the name of Jesus. Something has been written about you. The plan of good and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. And I command you to return home. I call you forth. Hear the voice of the Lord. Return home. Return home. Return home. Return home. Return home. Return home. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you all praise. I've seen a pot in a shrine. It has been there for long. That pot, that pot was kept there because of the children of your mother that you will never amount to anything but today I break that pot I break that pot and I break your destiny I speak freedom I speak freedom. I speak freedom. I speak freedom. I speak freedom. In the name of Jesus. You are free. All of you who are sick, raise your hand. It is written concerning you by, by his stripes, you are healed. Every ulcer, every asthma. Diabetes. High blood pressure. HIV whatever pain on your head your chest behind you severe back pain I'm feeling right now somebody is suffering with that you are being healed right now because by his stripes you are healed it's written concerning you that you are healed there's somebody here you think about dead. Where are you? Come here. It's not that you just think about dead. You sleep. The thought of death keep tormenting you. Where are you? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Because I know it's not an old person. The way God will turn your life, you'll be surprised. You will not die. I cancel 
the spirits of death over you, over your mother, over every area of your life, I cancel it. The Bible says you will not die. It's written about you. You will not die but live to declare the counsel of God. It's not time to die. It's not time to die. It's not time to die. You have a great work to do for God. I cancel and I destroy the spirit of death over your life. You live to fulfill destiny. Bring your two hands. Open your two hands. Not that way. Look at me. Just open them. Like the way this lady opened her hands. And I pray for you that from today, life. 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 Every satanic arrow against your life is broken right now. Get the door in the secret place of the Messiah. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They shall say the Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. What can man do to me? Even when the wicked gather up themselves to eat my flesh, they shall stumble and they shall fall. Let the presence of God take over your life. I break the power of death over your life. You will not die. That accident will not happen. You will not die. You will live to declare the gospel of God. In Jesus' mighty name. You will not die. You will live to declare the gospel of God. One day in your life will not be taken off. You will fulfill, fulfill, fulfill destiny. You will fulfill destiny. You will fulfill destiny. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody here. You know you are supposed to read abroad. But every door is closed. Where is that person? Where is that person? You know that you are supposed to read abroad, you, have make, you are making effort. When I call, just come fast, I don't have time. But things are being broken. Come here, come here. You are trying, things are not working. Things are not working, but you feel in your spirit that that is the will of God. Concerning. There are also other people here that you are doing business, but you know God is God wants you to do business across the borders of this country. It's a big business you see. But right now you can't, you can't even, it's, it's not close. Helpers of destiny. They will locate you. If you are there, please come because I'm praying. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I give all praise. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Labakosha kabalibakaria. Open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors. This yes, your hand will experience. I don't know who I'm talking to, but, but there's somebody here that you will, count, you will count money. Right now you don't have anything. But you count money and you ask people to help you to come and count. I release, I release, I release you from the captivity of Satan. I release you from limitation. And I bring you forth to your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. We are the pastors. Lift up your hand. You are a man of God. You are a Minister, I pray for you. Whatever is written about you shall come to pass. Whatever is written about you shall come to pass. Whatever is written about you shall come to pass. You, come to pass. you fulfill destiny. You fulfill destiny. You fulfill destiny. You fulfill destiny. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much. There, there's, there's, there's somebody here. You have made effort two times actually to get married. You say, man, but it did not work. Where are you? I did not work. I did not work. I did not work. Where are you? Serious effort. It didn't work. The yoke is broken. I will just speak to you. And I order you. Go and get married. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.